Now that we've seen that AC circuits will oscillate back and forth in time, let's go back and revisit an old topic, that of Ohm's Law. Remember that Ohm's Law is V equals IR for DC circuits. However, with oscillating circuits, with these AC circuits, it becomes a little bit more complicated. And this really only holds, Ohm's Law only holds, if the values of V and I peak at the, or only works for the peak values of this. Hence, we could rewrite Ohm's Law as the peak voltage is equal to the peak current times the resistance in that circuit. This is the thing we've had, we've seen before. However, as we said, if they're not peaking at the same time, which is probably not going to happen in, for the most general AC circuits, we have to have a new expression. And then that new expression is going to look very similar. It's going to say that VRMS is equal to IRMS. So no longer the peaks, but the RMS is equal, to, or the voltage is equal to the current times the Z. And Z is called impedance. The quantity of impedance is Z. Uh, we're going to actually discuss in a later video. So don't get too ahead of ourselves. Let's actually go back and look and see what the other two terms look like, and we'll handle those first. So the first term, voltage RMS and IRMS, we have this thing, uh, this RMS, and we're going to define RMS as root mean square. It's what we shorten it to, we, we shorten root mean square to, uh, to represent. And really, the root mean square is given uh, for voltage or current by the following two equations. The VRMS, or the, the uh, root mean square of the voltage, is defined as the square root of the average of the square of the value of voltage. Or the current is equal to the square root of the average of the square of the current. Sounds a little bit complicated, but what we're looking for is essentially some average value of our sinusoidal circuit. Since the voltage is not constant in time, we can't just say the circuit has a voltage of 120 volts. That really doesn't have a true meaning, since we know that for 120 volts, we could be, do we mean that it's, it starts at zero, goes up to 120, then down to negative 120, or does it start at zero, go to 60, back down to negative 60, or something else? So RMS is our way of describing AC circuits that have sinusoidal motions, and it's dealing with some form of an average. And the RMS is equal to, really, the peak voltage that we get divided by the square root of 2. Same thing for the current. The RMS current is equal to the peak current divided by square root of 2. And we're going to actually take a little bit closer look of why this happens. And again, we have the same definition as before, that our voltage is equal to our square root of our average. These little triangle brackets mean average of the square. So the, to obtain the RMS voltage, the first thing we want to do is square the regular voltage. So we start off with our regular voltage, and we square it. When we square the voltage, we'll notice that these peaks, these negative peaks, because they're squared, will become positive. We'll get something that looks still in a semi-close to a sinusoidal. It's actually a squared sinusoidal pattern. Now what we do is we we'll take the average of this uh, value, and we draw a line through the center. So we're taking the average value, and if you'll notice that these top peaks up here would fit in the valleys on the other side. So the average is just halfway between the two. So the average of the cosine or sine function for a squared value is just half of that. And then if we actually want to get back the quantity of voltage, we just take the square root of both sides, and then by definition, that is what the RMS value is. So it's related to uh, averaging of the peak and the zeros of this, but it's done in a pretty unique and a very standard way of seeing this. So when we talk about RMS, the kind of the main thing that we want to remember is that the RMS voltage is related to the peak voltage by this factor of 1 over square root of 2. 